Thanks for checking out the video today. I needed to solve my bathroom humidity problem. I created a system that would monitor the humidity in the bathroom, turn on the fan when it got too high, turn it back off when it got to an acceptable level. Before we get into the build and some of the code, I wanted to talk about automation and the internet of things. Automation is the use of sensors and controls to operate something without human intervention. The Internet of Things, in this sense, it's going to be describing a physical device that has an embedded processor, some sensors, a few control systems, and the ability to connect to a network. I also needed to have manual control. I also used the WeMOS board, which has built-in Wi-Fi, a relay shield, and a humidity shield. It was really easy to get started. Let's take a look at the WeMOS board now, and we'll go over some of the cool features I added in the app a little later. I based this project on the Wemos D1 Mini. It's a Wi-Fi board with an ESP8266 microcontroller, which features built-in Wi-Fi. It has stackable headers so that you can add shields for easily prototyping different projects. We're going to need two different shields for this project. The first one is the relay shield. It operates on five volts and can handle up to 10 amps at 120 volts AC. It has a normally opened and a normally closed terminal. If you're interested in seeing how I soldered on the, the headers, you can check out my first two Wemos videos where I go over details on both of these boards. The DHT11 shield is a temperature and humidity shield. It features a temperature range of negative 20 to 60 degrees Celsius and a humidity range of 20 to 90% real humidity within plus or minus 5%. Like I said before, if you wanna know how these boards are put together and how they come packaged, I have a couple of videos that you can check out and I'll go over those there. For now, we're gonna jump into the code. I uploaded everything to GitHub and you should be able to either download the file there or open it in the GitHub browser and copy and paste it over into your own project. If you watched one of my previous videos, you'll know how this is gonna work. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy and paste the code in, explain it really quickly, and then give you a moment to pause. You'll see a big pause button and hear this sound and then you'll know it's okay to pause. In section one, we're including the ESP library, the DHT library, the simple timer library, and the blink library. In section two, you'll need to include your blink app authorization code, which allows you to connect to the cloud, your Wi-Fi name, and your Wi-Fi password. In section three, we will be setting up our input and output pins, and we'll also be setting up a few timers. The first timer is for the Blink app, and the second timer is for our countdown. Section four, we set up our variables. We set up humidity and temperature, fan state and override, and our countdown timer and our countdown remaining. In section five, we set up our first function. This is the send sensor function. This function is going to get the temperature and humidity from the sensor and store it and send it over to the Blink app. When the fan override button is pressed on the Blink app, it initiates the countdown timer function. We will see that in a few minutes. In the seventh section, we have the fan control function. The fan control function tests the humidity level and if it's over 60% humidity, it will turn on the fan. And it will wait until it returns to under 50% humidity to turn the fan off again. The fan control function gets run every time the program loops. The countdown timer function in section eight is called whenever we press the override button. This timer runs for 10 minutes or 600 seconds and will not allow the fan control function to run, therefore keeping the fan on or off without any regard to the humidity. 
Section 9 and 10 are a part of every Arduino program. It's the setup and loop function. In setup, we set up our serial communication, our pin outputs, our blink app, and our timers. In the loop function, we put all of the code that we want to be called. This is our blink app, our timer, and our override timer. And these will continuously get called over and over again. Once all your code's in, it's time to load it up onto your board. If you need to know more about how to do this, you can check out one of my other two videos. I go over it pretty well there. Once you start uploading the code, the LED on the ESP chip will start to blink rapidly. Once it's finished uploading, you'll get a blink logo in the serial terminal. You'll then know your upload was successful. I found this Blink app a few years ago, and it truly is amazing. You can make an app in five minutes. And their cloud platform is pretty good too. And they have a ton of pre-written code so that it's really easy to get started with some basic programming. I'm not gonna go over everything about this app. They have a really good tutorial page that'll walk you through how to get set up and how to write your first piece of code. If you'd like to see a video on this, I could certainly do one, let me know. But I don't think it's necessary as they do a really good job of teaching you how to do it. Just like on the Arduino page, they have great documentation that shows you how to use everything. It's really easy to find what you're looking for. I often utilize the browser search tool. On the right side here, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to get started with building just a simple code. On the left side, I'm gonna show you the app that I built, and at the end, I'm gonna show you how to download it. I started with a value display for humidity. This will display the humidity as a percentage. Next to that is an LED for when the humidity gets too high, this LED will indicate that. Below that is a value display for temperature. This displays the temperature. Next to that is an LED. It's the override LED. This is going to show us when an override has been engaged. Below that is the fan override button. And next to that is the override gauge. The gauge counts down from 600, which is 600 seconds. Blink allows you to share projects. So once you download the Blink app and set up an account, you'll be able to scan this QR code and copy everything that I have. Now for the electrical setup, I want to be clear, do this at your own risk. And anytime you're messing with your home electrical, it's a serious, serious thing. So do not do this if you don't feel comfortable with doing it. I had a set of dead Christmas lights that I took one end of each plug from that I'm going to plug in between the normally open circuit on the relay. I soldered them together and used some heat shrinkable tubing to seal that up. And what I did is I made sure that there was no wire exposed outside of the screw terminal and just soldered those up so that any little pieces of wire would get clumped together. Once I knew they would fit, I pushed them in there and screwed it down nice and tight. I used some electrical tape to cover up any exposed circuitry and I'm using a zip tie block. This is going to secure the whole thing to the inside of the fan compartment. And you can see here for me, it's going to be really, really easy installation. The fan has a plug on it. So what I'm going to do is plug one end of my Wemos setup to the outlet and I'm going to plug the fan into the other end of the Wemos out outlet. This is connected through the relay on the normally open section. So the circuit is normally off. And when the relay is engaged, the circuit will be turned on. I do think I'm going to change where the sensor sits because after some testing inside of this little compartment doesn't seem to get as humid as the bathroom itself. So I'm going to rewire the sensor so that it's outside of the fan compartment. This was actually the first time I tested it and I was very surprised that it worked first shot. 
it took about six minutes real time for the humidity in my bathroom to get high enough for the sensor to kick on. I think I'm gonna eventually adjust that down so that the sensor kicks on a little bit earlier. But I was super happy that the override worked so we can turn it on and off whenever we want. Doesn't matter what the humidity is. Thanks for checking out the video. Let me know what you thought in the comments and take care.